Make it stop. Well, no more scary games for me, but maybe scary cookbooks? Let's dive in and see what we can eat as we spend five nights at Freddy's. The official Five Nights at Freddy's cookbook by Rob Morris plunges us deep into the Megaplex to sample over 40 recipes inspired by Freddy Fazbear and his animatronic friends who are the star mascots of the hit horror game Five Nights at Freddy's. Now full disclosure, I've never played any of the FNAF games, but I've always been interested in the fascination over these games. I know lore is a big part of FNAF, and I'm sure a lot of lore references are gonna go way over my head, so whatever I miss, please help me out FNAF fans and point them out in the comments. This cookbook kinda acts like a guidebook for Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, which is the setting for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Each chapter is inspired by an animatronic from the series. Of course, we got a Freddy Fazbear Pizza chapter, but along that are Bonnie's Burger chapter, Chica's Chicken section, and Foxy's Pork Dishes. The second half of the book are inspired by the Glamrock animatronics like Glamrock Freddy's Classic Dishes, Glamrock Chica's Breakfast, Roxanne Wolf's Dessert, and Montgomery Gator's Drink Chapter. The recipe pages have that retro 80s aesthetic with a lot of neon bright colors and checkerboard diner style patterns with a sort of faded paper-like finish, but contrasting this bright and fun design are elements of something more dark and sinister, such as blood splatters, ominous notes, and newspaper clippings of abductions. There are also plenty of illustrations and in-game screenshots of the game locales and animatronics, so there is no shortage of visuals. But this contrast of vibrant fun and dark creepiness also extends to the food photos themselves. Most of the food photos look pretty colorful and tasty, many plated on checkered deli paper for that retro style diner look, but in some of them lurking in the background are some of the animatronics with their unsettling creepy grins just watching and waiting for you to even try to reach out for the food. Ugh, no thanks. In terms of the food, most of it is diner-style comfort food with a tiny sprinkling of Asian and Mexican influences. I think the recipes play it fairly safe and none of them got too bizarre, but I was really hoping to see some of the dark parts of FNAF incorporated into the recipes. But I guess it wouldn't make sense since lore-wise I think the book is trying to make it seem that it was made before all of these animatronics went out of control. Okay, we've been dilly-dallying too long, so before we get hit with a jump scare, let's get to cooking. I'm making three FNAF inspired recipes to see what we can eat as we spend five nights at Freddy's. Now even though I know nothing about FNAF, I know enough that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is iconic to the series, so let's flex at the Pizza Plex with this Freddy Fazbear's Pepperoni Express. Our first step is making the Pizza Plex Master Dough. In a bowl, combine one and a half cups of lukewarm water with two and a quarter teaspoons of dried yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. Once combined, leave it alone and let it foam up. While we wait on that, in a separate bowl, mix together three and three quarter cups of unbleached bread flour, a two third cup of fine semolina and a teaspoon of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then make a well in the center and pour in that foamy yeast mixture from before and also add in four tablespoons of olive oil. Then mix everything with a wooden spoon to form the pizza dough. Next step, plop the dough on a lightly floured surface and knead this for 10 minutes. Yes, 10 minutes. I thought this was going to be long and agonizing, but it was surprisingly calm and meditative. The dough kind of feels like a stress ball and it's a nice arm workout, so resist the temptation of the stand mixer and use some elbow grease. When the dough is nice and smooth, place it inside an olive oil greased bowl and cover it. Leave it in a warm place for about an hour and let it double in size. Place the dough again on a lightly floured surface and roll into a log shape, then divide into four equal parts. You can freeze these to use for a later time, and when you're ready to use them, roll them out to about 11 inches in diameter. That's our dough. Next is the sauce. Specifically, the Easy Plex Pizza Sauce. This definitely is easy peasy. Just strain a 14 ounce or 400 grams can of chopped tomatoes into a bowl and press all of those tomato chunks through the mesh with a spoon. Then add in two tablespoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of sugar, and some salt and pepper to taste. Super easy and no cooking required. 
Spread the Easy Plex pizza sauce over the pizza dough and sprinkle on some mozzarella cheese and some pepperoni slices. Scatter over some capers. The cookbook says the capers are optional, but I love capers, so I'm definitely taking that option. Pop this pizza in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes until the cheese is nice and bubbly and the crust is golden. Cut the pizza into slices and sprinkle on some fresh arugula leaves on top and you're ready to munch down on this plate of Freddy Fazbear's Pepperoni Express. Now when it comes to horror games I can be quite a chicken and that's my genius segue to this Chica inspired dish, Chica's ultimate Thai chicken burger. First things first, we gotta make a slaw by combining a quarter cup of finely shredded cabbage, one peeled and matchstick sliced carrot, half a finely sliced red onion, half a red chili, the juice of one lime, a half tablespoon of honey, one crushed garlic, a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, half a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a handful of cilantro. Once mixed, let it set for about 15 minutes to get the flavors to melt. Now let's put together the star of our burger, these chickalicious Thai patties. In a food processor, add in four roughly chopped up skinless and boneless chicken breasts with one beaten egg and pulse this a few times to mince the chicken, but don't overprocess because you still want some of that texture, we're not aiming for chicken mousse here. Place the chicken into a bowl and add in two cloves of crushed garlic five finely chopped scallions, zest and juice of one lime, one tablespoon of red Thai curry paste, one tablespoon of chopped cilantro, also add in one tablespoon of soy sauce and a teaspoon of fish sauce. I forgot to film the last two here, but I did add it in eventually, those are gonna be essential. Once everything is well incorporated, add in two cups of fresh breadcrumbs to the mixture also. With slightly wet hands, start shaping them into patties and let these chill in the fridge for 30 minutes before using, and when you're ready to cook, heat up a tablespoon of vegetable oil in a frying pan over medium heat and fry the patties for about 3-4 to four minutes each side until brown and fully cooked through. Our last component is the sauce. Mix two tablespoons of mayo with two teaspoons of Thai sweet chili sauce. Take some toasted burger buns and spread the sweet chili mayo on the base of the buns, then add some arugula. Follow that up with the Thai chicken patties, then the slaw, and then the bun. Slaw and saucy chicken burger with an Asian twist. Nice. Now to wash it all down, we need to make a nice tall icy glass of soda roni slushy. For this, we just need to put a bunch of stuff in a blender, 9 ounces or 250 grams of frozen raspberries. The cookbook also suggests that you can replace this with strawberries, blackberries, or any kind of frozen mixed berries that you like. Add to that the juice of a large lemon, half a cup of sparkling water, half a cup of cranberry juice, a 3 quarter cup of ice, and 1 tablespoon of honey. Blend this until smooth and pour into a glass, topping it off with some more frozen raspberries as a garnish, just like the cookbook's photos, and this right here is the cookbook's take on the Sodoroni slushy. Alright, alright, enough of the jump scares, let's eat. Starting with the iconic Freddy Fazbear pizza, not bad, pretty solid. The pizza ain't floppy, the sauce, cheese, pepperoni are all evenly distributed, and the arugula and capers give it a subtle bitterness, but all in all, the pizza tastes pretty average, not bad for homemade, but I feel like the sauce doesn't have that oomph, you know? Which is to be expected since it's a quick and easy no-cook sauce, but it really does sacrifice a lot of flavor that's usually released by onions and garlic as they simmer in tomatoes and herbs. The crust to me also tastes pretty doughy and lacks that crispiness that I've gotten from other homemade dough. Still not bad, but you really have to be generous with the toppings to get a pop in flavor. Okay, let's try these Thai chicken burgers. These actually smell super good, and taste-wise, it's very delicious. I love that salty umami subtle funk from the soy sauce and fish sauce. The lime and cilantro give it a nice zing, but half a red chili isn't enough for me. I like things spicy, so I probably would use two next time to fit my taste. The coleslaw gives it a refreshing crunch, and the sweet chili mayo lightens things up a bit. And the texture of the chicken burger was really good, but the patties I made were too big. The cookbook says that the meat mixture makes four patties, but I think dividing it into six would have made the patties more proportioned with the buns that I got. Let's wash these down with some Sodoroni. I love cranberry juice, but this is super tart. Way too sour for me, and I love sour things. I probably should have added more honey, but I don't know. Raspberries, cranberry juice, and lemon seems like sour overkill. 
I'm still kind of curious though about how an actual Soderoni would have tasted like. I think the one in the game is actually pepperoni flavor. Now that might sound gross, but a part of me kind of wished that the cookbook went outside of the comfort zone and tried to embrace some more of the wacky stuff from the lore like that. Would I have regretted drinking it? Yes, but trying it, I most certainly will do. So, is the Five Nights at Freddy's cookbook any good? I think the design of the cookbook is pretty good and it captures the juxtaposing imagery of fun and frightening that FNAF is known for, but I don't know, I think the recipes played it a little too safe and didn't delve into the more dubious side of FNAF food. Sick burger though. 